In the first story, we get a rare glimpse into the mind of the cheater. And this guy thought that what he did wasn't that bad, because he stopped halfway and didn't finish, because the girl he's cheating on his wife with wasn't good in bed. Then tried to weasel his way out of taking responsibility for what he did. Now let's see how this story unfolds. Original post, my wife and I have a great relationship. I can't say I have any real complaints. We have been together for five years, married for two of those, and up until now, I would have said I would never stray. I was away for work last week, and while I was in the hotel, a young woman 21 female sat next to me and began to flirt with me. I was extremely flattered by the attention. I have to admit it was a real ego boost to be flirted with by someone so young, as I've started to get that middle-aged dad bod and have been feeling like I'm losing my looks a bit. After a bit of talking, the woman invited herself back up to my hotel room, where we started doing it. For me it was all about the thrill of being desired by someone other than my wife, especially by a very young woman. I was slightly drunk, and I figured I'll probably never get the opportunity to sleep with a 21-year-old again. But the thrill wore off very quickly as I realized that I wasn't enjoying myself. This girl was not good at all. She basically just laid there and starfished. Sometimes she would pull herself into what she thought was a sexy pose, but that was it. She didn't seem interested in me at all, she seemed more interested in herself and how sexy she thought she was. Intimacy with my wife has always been amazing. When I'm with my wife, she's all over me, talking to me and telling me how hot I am, grabbing me, touching me, and so on. I feel like the hottest guy in the world when I'm with my wife. With this girl, I felt like I could leave the room and she might not even notice, let alone care. She seemed like she just wanted the ego boost of a guy finding her attractive. I couldn't stay on, and stopped about 10 minutes into it and asked her to leave, which she did. I didn't finish, I just took a shower and then called my wife to hear her voice. Now I'm back home, and so far, I haven't told my wife about any of it. There's a guilty part of me that says I should, because she deserves to know, but another part of me says, why should I torpedo our happy marriage and cause her pain, for something that I didn't even enjoy and will never do again? All it did was prove to me that I want my wife more than anyone else. I want to do the right thing, but I genuinely don't know what the right thing to do is here. I know that I will never ever stray again. Should I tell her or keep it to myself? Now for the top advice before reading the update. I, 40 male started to cheat on my wife 38 female, but stopped halfway through. You didn't start to cheat, you cheated. Hard stop, you worded it this way to make yourself not sound bad. Let me say it again, you cheated. Don't forget that you said you didn't enjoy it because you felt she wasn't that into it. Would you have felt bad and still stopped when you thought she was great? Again, you cheated. Okay then, yes, I cheated. I do take responsibility for that, I realize I've messed up. If she'd been great, then I don't know. The fact that she was so bad brought me back to reality. But I think even if she had been great, I would still have realized that I ultimately just want my wife. Then take actual responsibility and come clean to your wife. Posting anonymously on in the internet to strangers isn't taking responsibility. You complain about her ego boost making her think she didn't have to do anything. This whole thing was ego boost for you. You are no different, but much more pathetic. It sounds like you only regret doing it with this other woman because she was bad and bad. If this 21-year-old was incredible and better than your wife, would you have stopped in the middle? Exactly. And also kind of blaming her for doing it for the sole reason to get her ego boosted. OP self-awareness is below zero. And now for the update. I really took a beating here when I made my first post, so maybe some of you will be happy to read this update. Maybe not. I was still not sure whether to tell my wife what happened or not after making the post. This is not because I'm selfish like some of you said, but because I was struggling to find the logic in telling her something that would hurt her when she didn't need to know because it was never going to happen again. But I did also take on board what others said about how if it was them, they would want to know, and to some point I agreed with them about that. It didn't end up mattering because my wife realized something was up a few days after I got back from my work trip. She brought up how I'd been very quiet and seemed off ever since getting back, and she looked and sounded so worried about me that I decided in the moment to tell her. I didn't want us to have any secrets from each other, so I told her everything. She didn't believe me at first, she believed I would start to sleep with the other woman, but not that I had stopped or that it was bad. I showed her the post I made so she could see I wasn't just spinning her a flattering story to try and get off the hook. She started to cry while reading it, and then said the sentence that has been going round and round my head 24-7 since then. I loved you so much. Loved. Past tense. I asked if she could really just fall out of love so quickly, and she said yes, and in the space of a few minutes, I had gone from the love of her life and the man she wanted to grow old with, to just another sad man having a midlife crisis. We talked for most of the night, 
but she wouldn't budge. She turned down my offer of marriage counseling or counseling for just myself. I suggested we take a short week's break so she can think about things, but her mind is made up. We are filing for divorce, and in the meantime, I am sleeping in our spare room so she can remain in our marital bed. This is not how I wanted any of this to go. She is without a doubt the woman I love, and the woman I will always love, and if I could go back in time, I would lock myself in my hotel room for that entire work trip and only come out for the conference. I hold hope that she might one day change her mind all the same. Our connection is too strong to be destroyed by 30 minutes of poor decision making. Did you really just ask her how she could fall out of love so quickly? My dude, you cheated on her. Where was your love for her in that moment? Why is it always the cheaters that have the audacity to accuse the victim of giving up? It was reading, I didn't want to hurt her and she didn't need to know. That did it for me. She didn't even really fall out of love. She just found out the man she was in love with didn't exist. Good for her. She deserves better. This woman is a rock star. Entirely too many people take back unfaithful partners and accept awful, selfish behavior. I'm proud of her for putting her foot down and refusing to budge on a boundary. Edit, OP, this is a situation entirely of your own making, and the fact that you seem incapable of properly taking accountability for your deliberate, conscious, bad decisions is just further proof that she's making the right move here. Awful behavior can and does sever relationships. If your connection meant so little to you that you could cheat in the first place, why are you surprised that it's not strong enough to keep her from leaving you? Good for your soon-to-be ex-wife. She has a shiny backbone. I think she will do wonderfully without a cheating husband like OP. Our connection is too strong to be destroyed by 30 minutes of poor decision making. If the connection is that strong, OP wouldn't have slept with another woman. What a funny way to try and displace blame again. Blame yourself. You're the maker of the decision here, not some foreign 30 minutes of poor decision. It's you. You are to blame for the whole thing. Exactly. Your connection was destroyed by your poor decision making, and not just 35 minutes of it. Your poor decision making started when you didn't immediately shut down this other woman's advances OP. You decided that your supposedly happy marriage and strong connection was worth less than you betting a 21-year-old. Truly shameful that you are shifting the blame onto your wife. I congratulate her for having enough respect for herself to throw you to the curb. The mental gymnastics is insane. Now for the last story. Update, my husband and Kelsey had more than a little sister relationship. For context, I am 34 and my husband is 37. He has a brother Brad who is 25. Brad dated Kelsey 24 for 10 years. They began dating when they were freshmen in high school. Their first date was actually my wedding. They were engaged for two years before Kelsey found out that Brad had cheated on her multiple times the year before and was still in contact and sending lewd texts to the woman he cheated on her with. This all came out about four weeks ago. The entire family was devastated and furious with Brad, who told Kelsey she could have the apartment and moved in with a friend over an hour and a half away. I think he just wanted to be far away from everything. It was weird because Kelsey was a part of the family for so long it was hard to just turn that off, and obviously we didn't, as she's going through a really traumatic time and needs support. Even so, I think it does reach a point where the family has to separate from her, since the only connecting thing Kelsey and Brad's relationship is now gone. My husband, however, seems to think that since he's regarded Kelsey as a little sister for so long, she should be treated as such. I come home multiple times a week to her over the house. When I ask my husband about it, he says he'll text her and ask her how she's feeling. And if she says she's feeling down, he'll invite her over to cheer her up. A few nights ago she was over, and while I was putting the kids to bed, my husband offered her a drink and they began drinking downstairs at the bar in our den. I had a medical procedure the next morning, nothing that was a big deal, but something I was supposed to be up and out early for. I didn't need my husband to come with me or anything, but I had mentioned that I would have liked if he would. He ended up offering the guest room to Kelsey, who was up and out early, and then slept in until an hour after I had come home. He has TikTok and just follows her, and a few other big accounts, but she's the only one he follows personally. The one thing I thought he did that I thought way overstepped, and what prompted me to have a conversation with him, is that the family is going on a two-week vacation to Belize. The house is owned by my in-laws so we go there often, and Kelsey has come many times. My husband invited her to come to this trip as well, which I think is odd since she is no longer dating Brad, who isn't coming on the vacation. When I had the conversation with my husband about how I thought he was crossing some boundaries with Kelsey, he got very defensive and said I was being heartless for wanting to just write Kelsey off. I tried to explain to him that I wasn't trying to write her off, but since she no longer had ties to the family, why would she come? If she began dating someone tomorrow, would we let her bring her new partner? 
My husband and I have two very opposing standpoints here and I'm trying to come up with a way to compromise. Edit, in no way do I mean cut her off. I think our family should show her we support her and are here for her. However, I think there are boundaries being crossed, drinking together at night causing him to miss my procedure, inviting her to vacation. Also, to everyone who seems to have an issue with me thinking she will need to be distanced from the family. How do you think my brother-in-law and any other future partners of his will feel about her joining in on family vacations? Again, I think she is a lovely girl and I will enjoy remaining on friendly terms with her. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Okay, there's room for compromise. No one needs to boot Kelsey out of the family that she has been a part of for 10 years. However, your husband does need to make you and the kids a priority. So, there's no reason for Kelsey not to be included in things. But when you tell your husband you need him to be available to you for things like your medical procedure, then he needs to be there. He's giving too much personal emotional support. Having her over constantly without asking his wife, prioritizing hanging with her over his family. Like yes, she is going through a hard time, but has he considered that maybe Kelsey will eventually want or need distance from this family if Brad is going to be staying in contact? Making themselves her primary source of emotional support instead of her own friends or family is dangerous. Now she is trapped near Brad when she should be using this opportunity to find new things. What are they going to do when she dates and maybe marries someone else? Are they going to forever assert they are family? Are they willing to eventually have to pick between Kelsey and Brad? Kelsey deserves better than a family that is strongly split between her and someone who cheated on her. Family support is fine, texts and being in her corner is fine, but she's not his little sister and this incident seems to have increased husband's relationship with Kelsey. It should remain the same amount of support as it was, no more home visits, but coming along on family vacation and group meals sounds fine to me. This is the correct approach in my opinion. I don't understand all the people saying that it's inappropriate or uncomfortable that he spends a lot of time with her. He's known her since she was 14, she dated his brother for 10 years. I completely get where he's coming from saying she's like a sister. He watched her grow up. So yeah, she's part of the family. If OP and her husband got divorced tomorrow, his family would be well within their rights to still want her around, because she is family. Aside from some priority shifting, I don't see the issue here. I've typed and deleted so many times. I personally would feel uncomfortable. Was your husband this involved with her life before she and Brad broke up? Did they hang out at your house often? Staying up late drinking together just sounds really weird to me. I don't know what specific line it crosses, but I don't like it. How many people are going on this family vacation? Anyone else close to her age? 10 years is a long-term relationship, but it's not that long and they didn't have children together. So, I just don't see why she would still be considered part of the family. Not as involved as this, but they were sort of close. It's us, as well as my in-laws, sister-in-law and her family. The people closest to Kelsey's age will be me and my sister-in-law, who is 35. And now for the update. I'm going to make this short and updating because of all the messages I got asking me for one. Like I stated many times in my last post, many times, though a number of people were still attacking me as though I wanted to banish her from speaking to any of us. I thought Kelsey was a lovely girl and didn't want to completely cut her off, just establish appropriate boundaries. My mother-in-law found out my husband invited Kelsey. Normally this wouldn't be an issue since the house is large enough to accommodate several more people, and to be fair, this wouldn't be the first time someone invited someone on behalf of the family. But the issue was, my mother-in-law had been speaking to Brad, my brother-in-law, and trying to convince him to come, and he eventually caved and said he'd come. So, my mother-in-law flat out said Kelsey can't come. Why would she even want to? It would be too weird for her or Brad. So, my husband came home and told me all this, and then tells me conveniently that he's going to have to come to Belize a week later because of work, and that he'd meet me and the kids there. I'm not going to get into the details because it got really personal, but it wasn't hard to find out that was a lie, and that he was planning on hanging out with Kelsey those days. This lie was the last straw, so I asked to see his phone. I looked through all of his messages on socials, and I found a number of flirty texts with Kelsey, as well as some photos that weren't naked or anything, but definitely suggestive. He said he hadn't realized how quickly things got out of hand, and that he never would have physically cheated. I don't believe that he hasn't already. I'm not really one for second chances, so I can't see this going much further, although I'm not making any permanently rash decisions until I've had time to clear my head and get everything in order. I love how he thought inviting his side piece on a family trip would just go swimmingly. Oh, she can't come, I suddenly need to work that first week. No one will ever know. Your husband and his brother are from the same cloth. Part of me wonders if Kelsey isn't deliberately trying to get back at Brad by getting involved with his brother, 
but the husband seems to be all too willing. All this seems to be happening really fast. I hate that Kelsey inflicted on OP exactly the same trauma she faced. Like, yeah sure, the brothers are trash, but she is such a hypocrite. Yes, this is one of the rare instances where I find the other woman as despicable as the cheating dude. Normally, I err on the side of, don't blame the other woman who may or may not have known. Blame your crap head husband. But in this case, I say throw both of them straight in the garbage. The fact that one, this 37-year-old married man is even flirting with a 24-year-old is icky, and two, the fact that 24-year-old is his little brother's very recent ex-girlfriend of 10 years, is just beyond all icky comprehension. He's known her since she was 14 and he was 27. I'm sorry, that's just gross. And he tried to so obviously lie in order to skip out of on a family vacation for a week, just to supposedly sit next to her. He's either dumb as rocks, or just really doesn't care about his marriage or relationship with his brother, or anything other than his own junk really. Your husband sounds immature and downright creepy. I'm sorry that you're even having to go through this, as you sound very mature and kind-hearted, but you'd be better off without someone like this in your life.